One, two, one, two. Test one, two. I guess the challenge is if they're too high, they backbeat. Test one, two. Test one, two. Test one, two. Yeah. Test, test one, two. Test one, two. Testing. You're not allowed. Testing. Test one, two. One, two. It's very loud. Who was mirrors. <laughs> Test one, two. Hello. Maybe it's me that's. Is it my phone? Hello? Hello, now it's better. Testing. Oh, too close to them. Keep, keep your space, you guys. <laughs> I'm good. Too loud? No, you're good. Oh, this is awesome. I, you can hear me, and I'm back here. Try this one right here. Right here. The mirror's mic. Test, one, two, three. Test, one, two, three. Test, one, two, three. Test, one, two, three. Test, one, two, Test one two three three two one. Hello. Good. And we're good. Thank you. Okay. Today is Monday, March seventh, twenty twenty two. We will start the Special Finance and Purchasing Committee meeting. Roll call, please. On Wazio. On Rivera. Present. On Florian. Present. On Hayes. Present. On Newsom. Present. Item C, public comment. Is there anyone want to speak on an agenda item on the Finance and Purchasing Committee? Being none, we have two items. The presentation. Item A, motion to waive the competitive bidding and to authorize the proper city officials to purchase six 2022 Ford Explorer police pursuit SUVs from Terry's Ford in Piatone, Illinois, with a total price not to exceed $256,000. Payment for the vehicles will be made from line item 205 one two zero five two six four nine three. Can I get a motion? Alderman Rivera, second. Alderman Hayes. Alderman Hayes. And it says that the six four PPVs from Terry's Ford in Piatone, Illinois, are assembled and ready to uh, ready for delivery. These vehicles are ready to be outfitted and will be ready for the streets within a matter of a few short weeks. Are there any questions to this motion? Can we just get clarification? Because I know there's people that always get annoyed with the waiving of the competitive bidding process. So can we just clarify why that was necessary in this instance? Yeah. 
Alderman, Flo I mean, uh, DC floor, do you want to, or the chief, you want to talk about why we're going to take these instead of wait 30 weeks? Um, okay, so right now, as we're all aware, vehicles are hard to come by. Um, so when uh, we met with uh, the finance department and talked about purchasing uh, vehicles, we were in scramble mode to get vehicles. We can't even purchase vehicles right now in this fiscal year under the state bid contract. There are no vehicles uh, to, to be purchased. For all of 2022? Until the, the new state bid contract comes out April 1st. Okay. So, however, which we'll see on the next item uh, that is on the agenda. So, we were unable to find vehicles anywhere and Deputy Chief Florup and uh, the Public Works Department worked very hard to find these vehicles and we just got really lucky in actually getting these six cars. Uh, there's no police packaged vehicles out there anywhere. So that's, and, and we're paying a little bit more for them because they're not on the state bid contract. I believe the state bid contract is 33 something and we're paying 30, Seven. 37. Um, so we're paying a little bit more of a premium price for these, but it's because there are no state big vehicles out there right now at this moment. And these vehicles were uh, actually outfitted to be delivered to another department and they were not able to take possession of them? That's right. Uh, another buyer backed out of them and we legitimately just got the right call at the right time to be able to get these cars. So in order to get them, we need to bypass the bid process. And we needed to move fast on them, Correct. otherwise somebody else was going to get them. I, I do also want to note, um, usually when we come before the council and ask for the purchase of vehicles, we usually have the equipment package with it. We don't have the equipment package um, to present to you yet. Uh, hopefully the next council meeting uh, will have that because in the rush to get these done, we're not done with the quotes that we need for all the equipment that we need for the squad cars, with the cameras, the computers, the light package. So we will be coming, there, there will be an additional cost on these vehicles uh, to outfit them. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. Are there any more questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Item B, motion to authorize the proper city officials to order and purchase 15 2022 Ford Explorer Police Pursuit SUVs under the state bid through Curry Ford in Frankfort, Illinois, with a total price not to exceed $508,605. Payment for the vehicles will be made from line item 205-1205-26493. And in fiscal year 2022-2023. Can I have a motion? A motion. Mr. Rivera. I'll second. Second by Alderman Florian. And we will be ordered, able to order these through the state bid. Are there any questions? Um, can you, well, sorry. I, um, so there's going to be six under item A and 15 under item B. So where are we at in replacing like some of our oldest vehicles? Because I know there's some people, some officers, I shouldn't say people, some officers driving cars that are pretty shabby. I'll, I'll leave it that's at a, that. That's a fair statement. Okay. Um, I, I, Deputy Chief Florup and with the assistance of uh, Brent Dominowski and the mechanics up at City Yards, over the past eight, nine months, we have retired a lot of police vehicles. We don't have any of the um, white package vehicles out there anymore. Those are all gone. We only have a two or three uh, Ford, I'm sorry, uh, Chevy Impalas, uh, the older models. We only have a few of those left. So we've actually thinned the fleet out pretty good over the last nine months. We just need to start adding to the fleet. That's basically where we're at. I'm not sure how many we're going to retire uh, when these cars come in, um, but as you're going to see during the presentation uh, for the budget, we have some high mileage vehicles that are they're gonna they're gonna retire themselves here probably in what, the let me ask you this and maybe you don't know the answer what's the oldest vehicle someone drives like how old year wise 2003 in the bureau 
Look at him just whipping that wow. up. But 2003, I mean, that's almost 20 years old. I mean, we're talking safety here. Now those, so, those, so it's understood, too. So those cars at that age are in our specialty units, in the detective bureau and other units. So they're not necessarily chasing yeah, they're, they're not. They're not, the, uh, they're not taking the beating that the road cars take every day. Our oldest road car is a 2012. But there's only a few of those left. 2014, 15? Okay, and one last question, I promise. Um, so can we somehow, and maybe you're gonna tell us this in your presentation, but can we somehow have a plan going forward so that we don't end up like, do you know what I mean? Like, so uh, let's buy, I don't know what it is, buy five cars a year, buy, you know what I'm saying? Like somehow so that it's it suddenly, when you become the new interim chief, you don't have, oh crap, I've got, you know, cars that are 25 years old. Sorry, I didn't mean to say crap, but. I think that's probably been a plan um, for prior chiefs, uh, prior to me. Um, it's a matter when the budget comes forward, whether there's money to, to purchase those cars. Yes, I mean, if I had my wish list, we would buy 10, 12 new cars every year. And if okay. we kept on that cycle, we'd probably be able to maintain a lot better. But we go a couple years without buying, then we buy cars, then we don't go, then we go a couple more years, you know, and it becomes problematic for us. So yes, this, uh, would, the ideal situation would be 10, 12 new cars every year. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, did we do a roll call on that? Roll call, please. Juan Rivera. Aye. Juan Florian. Aye. Juan Hayes. Aye. Juan Newsom. Aye, motion carried. Reports and communications, we have a presentation from the police department. <laughs> we would not do that, do we? We got to know our own answers. Come on, you got one job. Technology, not our strong suit. Okay, Alderman, um, this is our uh, uh, proposed uh, Waukegan Police Department summary of request uh, for our uh, budget in the new fiscal year. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Obviously, the majority of our budget uh, gets eaten up in personnel cost, 
salaries, uh, benefits, pension. Uh, so the, we're basically not going to talk much about that tonight. We're going to talk about the other areas of our budget, areas where we feel we're a little deficient, where we would request uh, some consideration uh, in this budget. Okay, so the Waukegan Police Department, total, we have 188 employees, 146 of them are, I'm sorry, 145 of them are sworn, uh, I'm sorry, 146 are sworn, uh, 42 non-sworn. Of that, we got one chief, two deputy chiefs, nine commanders, three lieutenants, 15 sergeants, and 115 officers. Uh, of that sworn personnel are uh, uh, racial and uh, uh, gender makeup is 56% are male white, 17% are male Hispanic, 27% uh, is the remaining makeup of our department. Of that, which is 6% male black, 6% male Asian, 6% female white, 5% female Hispanic, 1% female black, and all others fit in uh, about a 3% uh, area. Next one, Jim. So these are the uh, uniform crime reports. Uh, uh, part one crimes uh, that are reported to the FBI. Uh, it's a snapshot comparison of our year 2020 and 2021. As you can see, we, we were pretty steady between the two years. Um, obviously, robberies we went down in, but aggravated batteries we went up in. Uh, burglaries uh, went down, but thefts went up. Uh, motor vehicles stayed about the same, and arsons, uh, we had a large increase. But overall, the numbers were pretty similar uh, from our prior year. So talking about a few of our areas uh, where we are, gonna, we are requesting an increase in funding, we're going to talk about professional services first. Pro professional services, uh, last year we only had 24,000 uh, budgeted in this line item. We are looking to increase this to the area of about 205,000. Why is that? Uh, our community relations uh, uh, contract comes out of this uh, professional services line, which is about $80,000 a year. Our translation services, it says 25,000, what are translation services? Uh, as we continue down the path uh, in, the criminal, uh, in the realm of the criminal justice system, we're finding ourselves in a position more and more often where we have to pay to transcribe interviews and interrogations that are sometimes done in English, but more often uh, Spanish-speaking uh, interrogations. And the state's attorney's office requests and requires us to transcribe those. So our costs are continuing to rise every year in that area. Uh, and then the bottom line there says uh, we're asking for a budget of about $100,000 for cleaning of the police department. As all of you are aware, and most of you have been through the police department before, we are in a very old uh, building that is in a state of disrepair in many of the areas. Uh, the the people that are assigned there from the public works department do a phenomenal job for us in that building. Um, the problem is they probably don't spend the amount of time cleaning the building as we would like them to because they're usually dealing with repairs and other things that the problems that we have in that building. So we're requesting to have a cleaning service come in uh, as we have had through most of COVID to help just keep the cleanliness of the building up, the cleaning of bathrooms, mopping of floors, uh, things of that nature, cleaning the cell block area, those areas. So uh, we are asking for an increase in funding in that area. Next one, Joe. So uh, our mental health uh, uh, program that we have in the police department. Uh, since May 1 of this, in this current fiscal year, we've spent approximately $5,600 uh, on officers requesting uh, mental health counseling. Anonymous counseling uh, that our officers are uh, encouraged to go to uh, should they need it. It's completely voluntarily. Uh, but something else that has changed with the criminal uh, justice reform bill is that starting in January of this year, every officer must uh, sit through a uh, mental health screening process. This is very new to the state of Illinois. Uh, we don't have to sit in front of a psychiatrist or psychologist and, and, and lay on the couch and get turned inside out. This is more of just a wellness screening. Um, and we've been to a few 
training sessions on this. We went to an executive symposium to kind of get a breakdown to understand where we should be going with this uh, and how the reporting works down to uh, the Illinois Training and Standards Board. We're estimating a cost of about uh, $25,000 to put all of our officers through this wellness screening that we are mandated to do every year. So we are asking for an increase in funding in this line in our mental health area from about 38,000 to uh, about 65,000. Okay, our favorite topic of police vehicles here. Uh, starting on the, on the top right, uh, we have uh, about 24 vehicles assigned to the patrol division. These are the Mark Squad cars that the officers that are responding to 911 calls, these are the cars that they drive. 58% of those vehicles have over 100,000 miles on them. 29% have over 124,000 miles. Uh, what, what's our cost uh, per vehicle approximately? About $55,000 uh, a car. As you saw uh, earlier when, on the agenda items, the cars are 33, 36,000, and then we got about $20,000 in equipment that goes into each one of these vehicles. Uh, our executive police packages are the vehicles that uh, the specialty units drive. Those uh, are obviously a little bit cheaper because we don't have to outfit fit them with the same amount of equipment. Those are generally only about $35,000 for us. We're considering, um, we, we know that we like our police officers to live in the city. We want them to live in the city. So those officers that do live in the city, we try to provide them with a take-home car. It's nice to have a squad car parked in a neighborhood. It's nice to have a squad car parked in an apartment complex. Um, right now, we don't have enough cars to do that for all the officers that are uh, inside of the city. So in the purchasing of these new cars, we're looking to do that. And we know that when uh, a car is assigned to one individual, the, the wear and tear on that vehicle is less uh, debilitating than when it's just a regular pool car that is getting driven shift after shift uh, and getting abused because it's running 24 hours a day. So it's an, it's an option that we have on the table that we're considering. Uh, neighborhood policing unit uh, fleet issues, uh, they have one operational car. Uh, when the neighborhood policing unit got shut down, their cars went back to the road. Those cars are absorbed into the road. Uh, one of them has went back to that unit, uh, but we're in need of cars for them uh, to obviously go out and perform the tasks that they need. Uh, the registration unit uh, and our community crimes division the, the, both of those units need to almost completely be replaced. Uh, the Criminal Investigations Division, their vehicles, 50% of their cars have over 110,000 miles. Now again, the specialty units cars, they, they don't take the beating that the other cars take on the road, um, but uh, we're, in, we're getting to the point in the specialty units as well that they're in dire need as well. And I should go back, uh, just so it's clear, the, the the six cars and then the 15 cars that we requested from council, or will be requesting from council, those cars are marked squad cars. Those are going to the patrol division. That is the area where we are in need the most, uh, and that's where those, uh, hopefully 21 vehicles will be going is to the patrol division. Uh, current age and mileage on the fleet will require an increase uh, in our fleet maintenance. Obviously, uh, the uh, mechanics uh, up at City Yards, uh, we task them out quite a bit. They are overworked for, at the rate that we send cars up there. Um, so we're asking for an increase in funding for that. From last year, we had 98,000. We're asking for 130. Uh, again, that's to buy parts and equipment and maintenance on these vehicles. You know, 2017 Ford Explorer just a month and a half ago blew a transmission, uh, and, to, and to replace that transmission is about $4,000. And we've had several of the Fords that have done that. Uh, and I suspect some of the ones that have high mileages will uh, continue down that road. We're also asking for an increase uh, in the rise to cover the cost of gas, which is no surprise. Uh, right now we're at 149, or last year's budget we had 149,000. We are asking for 175,000. Currently at this, at this point, uh, a few days ago, we had already spent 160,000 in gas, and I'm not sure where that's going, but we're asking for an increase in that area. Okay, uh, the PD, uh, our IT budget uh, is approximately 625000 Of that, a, a, approximately a half a million dollars, $500,000 of that money comes from our asset forfeiture fund, our seizure fund. Uh, of that IT budget, about 400000 of that is uh, earmarked 
every year for Axon. What's Axon? Axon is our body camera program. It's our in-car camera program. It is our interview room cameras, uh, and hopefully at some point it'll be the cameras inside of the police department. Uh, but that's obviously a big cost. It's a cost that probably is not going away anytime soon, uh, as the camera program is an extremely important part to uh, our policing uh, every day out on the street. So, uh, and that continues to rise. Now, we, we do have multiple contracts with Axon right now that we are actually trying to combine. Uh, they, Axon actually reached out to us to talk about this and said that if we consolidate a couple of these contracts, we might, they might be able to save us a little bit of money. Uh, they obviously recognize how much money we spend and know that um, we will be continuing to be cu customers of theirs, I'm uh, quite certain, for a long time. Uh, our in-house camera system is something that we uh, need to take a look at. We did upgrade cameras in the booking room, the cell block area, uh, over the last year. Uh, but we do have some spots inside of the police department where we do need to put more cameras in uh, for, for coverage for when victims, witnesses, and suspects come into the building. Though the police officers generally are wearing their body cameras and covered with a body camera on, we still need to have some... Uh, cameras uh, replaced and installed inside of that building. Um, and again, we talk, I already talked about that. A good chunk of this budget comes out of our state and federal seizure funds. Okay, our uh, parking uh, enforcement program. Last year, uh, the police department uh, and the city joined IPS Smart Parking Solutions. Uh, they are street meters were upgraded. Uh, we, I think most of you have probably seen over the past several, uh, six months or so, we've upgraded uh, all of our parking meters out there. The pay stations were upgraded. They now have online options to pay for this upgrade. IPS based their, their cost to us every year is based on uh, sales, the usage, and the amount of tickets that we write. Uh, we would ask for a recommendation of about 150,000-ish uh, for this portion of the budget. That's what IPS is approximately going to cost, or they're going to charge us a year to use their system. We're also recommending the purchase of four digital parking ticket units, basically a ticket writing machine that is a digital machine. Uh, we have one right now. Uh, we're looking to add more. Uh, total cost uh, for this year would estimate about $10,500 to purchase those additional units uh, so we can have other officers out there writing digital tickets versus paper tickets. IP, uh, IPS costs for the fiscal year would estimate, again, anywhere, somewhere in the area of uh, 150, 160, with maybe a top uh, price somewhere in the area of about $200,000. Estimated revenue for this program could be anywhere between one and two million dollars. We are going off of that number of prior years from parking citations. Um, we're hoping that with the ability to be online, uh, the, that the process will be streamlined much easier for people to make payments and maybe our payment um, uh, percentage will rise with the, with the ease of payment. So along with that, uh, currently right now we have uh, one parking enforcement officer in the police department. We are asking uh, to increase that by five officers. We are asking uh, to increase that. Uh, they're the uh, what they work under, they're called police auxiliary. They're parking enforcement officers, but they can also be used for a variety of other tasks. Uh, I, I won't call them a full-fledged community service officer, but they, are, they have that ability to, to fill that role. Uh, they can do com community-oriented issues that need to be uh, taken care of, lockouts, uh, vacation house checks. They can assist at uh, tr uh, major uh, traffic accident scenes where it can free up an officer to be out there to answer more, uh, answer additional calls, where then we'd have a uh, parking enforcement officer there directing traffic. So it, we're not only looking to use them only for writing parking tickets, uh, but that is our, uh, is our goal. We are asking uh, to increase that unit. At one point in time, that unit had um, three, or, I'm sorry, two parking officers, uh, parking enforcement officers. We haven't had a second parking enforcement officer, I want to say, for probably at least six or seven years, somewhere in that area. I might even be a little shy on that, it might be longer. So we're looking to increase that. We put these new parking meters in, we have this new system, uh, we think it's a benefit, uh, we just need to have the personnel to uh, go out there and have the ability to write those uh, parking citations. 
Uh, the PD is also asking, uh, is requesting to add a clerical tech position to our records division. Uh, the end goal is to have uh, parking fines automated uh, at some point in time, but right now we're not there. Uh, the patrol officers that work the streets are still writing paper tickets. When paper tickets come into the police department, they have to be uh, manually entered into this system. At some point in time, we would, down the, the, the road at so, some point in the future, uh, I'm not guessing it's going to occur this year or maybe even next year. Uh, we would like to end paper tickets, but we're not there at this point in time with this program. Uh, another uh, new uh, uh, area that we're asking for some funding is on the automated license plate reader uh, technology. Uh, sure, all, most of you are aware of what these are. Uh, these are these can be mounted on motor vehicles. They can be uh, put in stationary positions. We are looking right now, we would like to get 20 uh, stationary cameras to put throughout uh, the city. High traffic areas, what are we going to use these for? We're going to hopefully use them to solve some crime. Suspects in cases will drive through these intersections. It will give us the ability to uh, 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 obtain a license plate on a suspect vehicle at some point in time. Also, when you put these uh, LPRs uh, at these different intersections, uh, it allows us uh, to be monitoring those intersections all the time. And what I mean is that when an, a, a motor vehicle drives through that intersection, if that's a stolen auto, uh, at some point we have the ability to set the system up that will allow for an alert to go to the dispatch center or maybe even the patrol officers that are in that zone that alerts us that says a vehicle is now westbound on Grand from uh, Lewis, and it's a stolen auto and the type of uh, vehicle it is. So it, they, they have their uh, uses in solving crime, uh, so we are asking uh, council to consider this. We're looking at a total cost for this project. We're looking at about a two-year, or we're looking for a two-year contract with uh, the company that we've uh, spoken with about this. The total, uh, no more than 120000 Basically, 60000 a year is what we are looking at for this program. We will not own any of the hardware for this uh, program. This will all be owned by the company. We're basically paying for the service to get this information. So we don't have to worry about it, uh, installation or dealing with damaged equipment. That This is all for the company to deal with. We're not going to own any of this uh, uh, hardware for this uh, company. So... Uh, we're asking the council to consider this uh, as well. Uh, last few things here. Uh, we're asking to increase our building maintenance. Uh, as I explained earlier, we have a uh, variety of issues inside of our police department. Uh, it seems to be like on a daily basis that uh, uh, Mr. Jenkins, Alonzo Jenkins, and his staff are dealing with. We're asking for an increase from uh, 22000 to 37000 uh, just to help us deal with our daily problems like uh, toilets that go down, uh, uh, hot water heaters that don't seem to work, uh, a variety of anything that you can imagine goes wrong inside of our building does at this point in time. Uh, virtual training. Uh, we were, we were, we're considering it where we're asking for this program would cost somewhere about $35,000. This would be virtual training done inside of the police department. It's the little uh, video game uh, gizmo gadget that goes on your eyes for training uh, in a variety of areas that allows us to train virtually. However, we, we are going to hold off uh, on making any type of purchase with this until we are 100% certain that the Illinois Training Board will accept this training for the mandated training that we have to do. If they're not going to accept virtual training, then we're not sure we're going we're gonna to leap into this because there's there's a lot of mandated training that we have to do, as obviously, as everybody knows, with the new Police Reform Act. We had a lot of mandated training. Now we have more. Uh, if this is not going to walk us down that road, we probably are not going to uh, ask for this purchase. Some of the grants that uh, we've had uh, over the last couple years, every year we get the burn grant, $24,000, different things that we used on it from the two, uh, 2021 year. We bought a couple of ballistic shields. Uh, we are looking for, to conduct a few more improvements to our training room. Um, applications are currently in the process of going in, for, uh, and they're due by July, 20, uh, July of this year uh, for the next year's uh, burn grant. Burn grant. Uh, every year, we get a canine grant of approximately $30,000, somewhere in that area. It helps to offset the cost of the canine program 
We have been receiving that grant for years. Uh, we've been very fortunate to get it. I hope we continue to get it. I don't see why we won't, but it helps to offset some of our costs with the canine program. We do the ta tobacco enforcement grant where we go into the uh, uh, gas stations and liquor stores and grocery stores and we make sure that our, our, our businesses are asking for ID properly. So we, uh, we always do that off of a grant every year uh, for about $9,000. It's a reimbursement grant. Uh, 2022, we have our step grant. Our step grant is our traffic grant. The uh, seatbelt uh, roadblocks that you see that we do all over the city. It's also DUI enforcement, uh, DUI saturation. So uh, we get that gr we've got that grant the last several years for about $150,000 of reimbursable grant from the state. Uh, those grants are due in October, and we are actually upping it this year an extra uh, $70,000 uh, we're asking for. Uh, we are asking for radar enforcement. We all know that uh, most of the aldermen and, most, and many of the citizens in the community have complained about speeding and our, our roads, our, our um, drag strips, and, uh, and obviously we do what we can to get out there to run enforcement on in that area for radar. But in this grant, there's actually a specific area for radar enforcement. So we are asking for an extra $70,000, which I suspect we will get after talking to the grant coordinator, that uh, will allow us to have extra money to do targeted radar enforcement throughout the city. And then the last grant um, is our Bulletproof Vest grant. It's a reimbursable grant. It's a $30,000 grant. We, some years, we go over the cost of the 30,000, depending upon where we are in replacement of our uh, ballistic vest, uh, some years we're under it. So, but it's a reimbursable grant that, that we have got year after year and we will continue to apply for it. Okay, last uh, slide here. Uh, our staffing, our, uh, we are, have an authorized strength of 151. Uh, however, we're budgeted to 150 uh, under this current fiscal year. Uh, as you saw earlier, we're at 145 uh, officers are employed. We are asking to increase uh, our staffing by five. We are asking for our, our staffing to move to 100, uh, 156 officers, five additional officers. What are we going to do with these additional officers? We'll probably assign them to the patrol division to beef up the patrol division. They could end up in a specialty unit. It all depends upon organizational needs. Uh, as many of you may or may not be aware, uh, you know, 15, uh, 20 years ago, our authorized strength was, strength was as high as 172. We haven't been anywhere near that number in well over a decade. Our numbers have crept up over the last five or six years, so that's why we're asking for an increase uh, in five. Uh, that's basically it for our presentation. Uh, those are our uh, requests, our, our, our wish list, uh, and the areas that we feel that we have some deficiencies that we'd like to try to improve. Thank you, Chief Zuzpec. Are there any questions from the council or Alderman Bolton? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for a hearing in your presentation discussing about upgrading the investigation rooms. I had a chance to review some of that and it was like, it, it was so muffled, you really couldn't hear, sorry, the interview. Uh, so, so and I heard that after, I, I know the alderman had uh, viewed uh, a video. I think it was because it was going through uh, a projector. When you listen to it on an individual computer, it's, it's not as bad uh, as, to, as what you had heard. So I apo apologize for that. I didn't know you were going to watch it through a projector. But I understand why. Okay, are there any more questions? Alderman Hayes. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, you had mentioned radar enforcement toward toward the end of the presentation. Are you referring to uh, the the radars that you're able to set on the side of the road that you can move throughout the city, or is that something different? No, no, I'm talking about radar enforcement. Officers with radar guns sitting on side streets uh, doing speed enforcement. Okay. Not, right. not a, the uh, radar unit that talks about how fast you go down the street. No. It, sure. Targeted enforcement by officers. Okay. Which is, which is great. I'm thrilled to hear that's what you were referring to. But as it relates to the more likely than not less effective form of radar, which is on the side of the road, I know it does make a lot of people feel more comfortable just to know that it's there 
and it does have a tendency, is my understanding, to just cause people to slow down, even if temporarily. Uh, how many of those units do we currently have? The two, three. We have three right now. I, three all optional or operational? Two. Mm -hmm. Two of them are operational right now. One is down. All right. I, I, maybe you can speak to how effective those are, but is there any plan to get more of those? We don't have, we didn't have the plans to get them. I think, I think it makes, um, I think it makes the public feel good when they're sitting on the street in, in front of their house. Uh, we do gra grab a lot of data off of those things. Um, some of it is a little surprising. Um, I, I don't know if people intentionally see how fast they can get themselves going to record on there. But uh, yeah, some of the data is, is somewhat surprising sometimes. But um, yeah, it's something we can definitely take a look at. I, I recognize that in, in the, the hierarchy of priorities here that that's probably pretty low, but if you wouldn't mind looking into it and perhaps budgeting what it would cost to even double, since we're only talking about two of them, um, those radars. Um, another question I have for you is about the ALPRs. So would those, those, you talked about crime prevention or at least tracking criminals using those cameras, would those also be used for electronic ticketing? I know the city of Chicago no, okay. not nothing to do with electronic ticketing at all. No. Okay. All right. And as it relates to those devices, it sounds like we'd be leasing them from the company. How is the data maintained um, and who is responsible for maintaining that data that's collected from those cameras? They maintain it and it is all cloud based. We maintain it. Is it cloud based? It's all cloud based, it's all cloud -based. but it's our data. It's our data. Okay. So we keep it. We maintain it. We have an opportunity to review it. We can hold it for as long as we want. That, those those types of. Yes, there is a substantial amount of data that will be collected from those LPRs. We probably are using again using them to try to help solve crime. You know, within days, a week, week and a half of something happening, or we're using them for live time. What a stolen auto goes through the area, an Amber Alert vehicle goes through the area. So. I'm not saying that we wouldn't ever go back to review data, but there's going to be a lot of data to review sure. if we so choose to do that. Okay. It's available if the need arises, right? Um, okay. There are a couple more questions. I'm sorry for commandeering the time. Uh, the, you're requesting five additional officers. What's the cost of adding an officer to the department? Uh, maybe 20. Give or take. Did you have that information, Don? Mr. Schultz? <laughs> Hi, Don. Salary plus benefits. Thirty-three is about seventy-two thousand, and add another sixty percent of the pension costs and benefits. Okay, we have training. One, one twenty, one thirty. Yeah, that's what I was about that ballpark when I asked about it one time. I was about one twenty, one twenty-five with everything, you know, uniforms, training, all the pension, all of that. Okay, and. The, thank you. The last question I have is, I know you had talked about the, the grant for ballistic vests, um, but I didn't hear anything else about officer safety equipment, helmets, I don't know if it's eyewear or if it's an upgrade in weapons. Um, is that, are you, are you going to be requesting an increase in funding for those types of items? We are not at this point in time. Over the last couple of years, we've spent some money in that area, so we are not at this point in time. Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, can I get a motion to seat Alderman Moisio? Oh, sorry, I had one. Motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Hayes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank You're you. You're seated. Thank you. All right, are there any more questions? I had one more question. I'm oh. so sorry. I remember that we had a presenter uh, maybe earlier part of this year that was go had the solution for the city in um, some kind of computer system design to save the city money and to help um, bring solutions to crime. It was a computer system that we were, they did a presentation, you know who I'm talking about? Spot, the, shot, the shot, shot spotter? Fire. Yeah, so with your technology, would you collaborate with a system like that? To, That's you know, since it was short on manpower and that is a separate system. Um, it's an expensive system. Uh, and at this point, we're not asking to purchase that at this point in time. All right, any more questions? Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very, very informative. Thank you. Thank you for the pen and the booklet. 
I'll be going through that. So um, can I take a motion to adjourn? Motion. motion by Alderman Hayes, second by Alderman Florian to adjourn at 6.44 p.m. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion opposed? Motion carried.